Hello, brethren, you are welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you as, jo- as you join us. My name is Pastor Yemi Omogboyega. With me is my wife, Pastor. This is Mary Omogboyega. Today's message is message number 49. Thank you for listening to the previous ones. Kindly continue to follow us. As I said, by the time we are through with i mean by the time we are one year old god willing in this program we would have covered the bible together picking all the messages that god wants us to know god bless you kindly remember to share pass your comments uh, and then press the like button press the notification button so that you get to know when we upload new videos it is very important i hope you are being blessed god bless you once more let us pray heavenly father we just want to thank you this morning for another very fresh morning thank you for the coolness of the night the peace and the freshness of this morning we thank you indeed for the past messages you have sent to us we appreciate you for the divine inspiration that actually gives us the um, go ahead and the opportunity to be able to express your word. Accept our thanksgiving in your Hoshua's name. Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord, for today, for everything you are going to do for us. Be thou exalted in your Hoshua's name. Lord, we thank you for meeting us at the point of our needs. We appreciate you as individuals for all you are doing for us, as a nation, Nigeria, for all you are doing for us, and the world at large for what you are doing for us, the people, the plant, the animals, the firmament, everything that you are taking good care of. Be thou exalted in Yehoshua's name. Mighty Father, we come before your throne of mercy this morning. Please forgive us our iniquities, O Lord, in Yehoshua's name. Then we are also forgiving those who sinned against us. Please forgive them on our behalf in Yehoshua's name. Today, Lord, let it bring good tidings to us in Yehoshua's name. Let us also send good tidings to people in Yehoshua's name. Do what only you can do, O Lord. You are the God of miracle. You are the God of blessing. You are the God of abundance. You are everything good to us. Please, let your favors follow us today. Let your mercies follow us today and all the days of our lives in Yehoshua's name. But I pray there are some people today who may have wondered whether they could even survive today. Lord God Almighty, I pray, turn their uh, ashes to beauty in Yehoshua's name. Let them have great testimony. Let them turn around for good in Yehoshua's name. We also pray for our dear country, Nigeria, the way things are going, Lord God Almighty, continue to be in charge, O oh Lord. Let only your will prevail. I pray, Lord God Almighty, for the world at large. Let there be stability everywhere in the world where there is war. Now, Father, please let peace come down there. Thank you, Father. Blessed be to your name. In your Hoshua's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
Um, we're going to take uh, Bible passages from the book of Psalm. We're taking from Matthew, Ma, Mark. We're taking from Exodus. So, in the book of um, Psalm, we're taking Psalm 22 from verse 22 to 31. And then in the book of Mark, we're going to take Mark 3 from verse 31 to chapter 4, verse 29. Then the book of Exodus, we are going to take um, the book of Exodus 23, 23 from verse 1 to 24, 18. Chapter 24, verse 18, that's where we'll stop today. Like I said, please follow us. We want to really cover the Bible. We are combing the Bible to dig out the truth about what God is telling us. And you are free, like I said, to please do not be lazy. Check out all these things. And so that you know the truth and the truth will set you free. God bless you. And the topic for today is um, prepare, uh, prepare your heart for understanding of the word. Prepare your heart for the understanding of the word of God. Now, God bless you. Let's hear Psalm 22. I will declare your name to my people. Mm -hmm. In the assembly, I will praise you. Mm -hmm. You who fear the Lord, praise him. Mm -hmm. All you descendants of Jacob, mm -hmm. honor him. Mm -hmm. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. Okay. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted mm -hmm. one. Hmm. He has not hidden his face from him, hmm. but has listened to his cry for help. Hmm. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Okay. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. Hmm. Before we eat and be satisfied, hmm. those who seek the Lord will praise him. Hmm. May your hearts live forever. Hmm. All the ends of the earth will remember and come to the Lord. Hmm. And all the families of the nation hmm. will bow down before him. Hmm. For dominion belongs to the Lord, hmm. and he rules over the nations. Hmm. All the rich of the earth will be feast and worship. Yeah. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Mm. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, mm. posterity will serve him. Uh -huh. Future generations will be told about the Lord. Uh -huh. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Amen. Let me start by saying that uh, I thank God that I am a living testimony of God's mercies. I am a living testimony of God's mercies. Therefore, I am a product of mercy, the mercy of the Lord. Now, this passage began with telling the whole world that I will proclaim the goodness of God. You see, somebody like me really will appreciate God more because nothing about me is not from God. Nothing. Everything about me is from God Almighty. So I can understand how this, how David was, you know, kind of praising God here. So, and how about you? I don't know whether you think it is by your power or knowledge or understanding or because of your background, or whatever, that you are who you are. No, it is not so. You are who you are by the special favors, fortunes, uh, grace, because your salvation is by grace. Everything, you are the special, you are specially favored by God to be who you are. And then there are some of you who are in difficulty and say, oh, is it these things that made me to still be where I am? I want to tell you. What you are going through, the difficulties you are going through is just but a passing face. You are going to testify, just as I'm testifying today, that the Lord is good. Let's take a few points there. The points. Our, our, our manner of life. Praising the Lord always. Mm -hmm. Writing my autobiography. Mm -hmm. Always be with us. Meeting us at the point of our mm -hmm. 
We shall always sit outside. Amen. You see, a God is always on our side. If we are, we must first surrender to Him because I, you see, those who need advice, they treasure advice when they see a good advice. But those who do not desire advice, indeed, no matter how much you desire to give them, to counsel them, to make a headway in life, they will not treasure it. They will not value it because they don't need it. They don't, uh, they don't uh, pant after such good advice. So, and so, it will be as if you are laboring, you know, in vain, trying to advise somebody whose heart is closed to counsel. The Bible says that in the, in the multitude of counsel, there is victory. And that many people, they despise counsel because they think they can do it on their own. So, don't be amongst them. Always, one thing you should start with in your life, start with God. As for me, I've determined I will start with God, stay with God, and end with God. Amen. And then stay with Him till eternity. May God Almighty grant that my request. And may your own desires also be granted in that pattern in Yahushua's name. So, first of all, start with God. And how do you develop your personal relationship with God? Praise Him always. Thank Him. Forget about the multitude or the many. They have no end. And more, 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 more will come. Problems, challenges, things that are unaccomplished will come. Rather, count your blessings. Count them one by one. And you will actually realize how much the Lord has done. The worry of our life is that we worry about that which God has not done. Or which He has done which we have not seen. and which Or which He will do. But we worry about no count the blessings of you know that the Lord has done for you. Like I said, I'm a byproduct of God's mercy. I'm just nothing but what God made me to be. So how about you? I praise Him for it. How about you? Always praise the Lord for who He is in your life. Then pray to Him also. I know you are afraid of enemies. Pray for your enemies. Don't pray against your enemy. Christ has taught us that in Matthew 40, from verse 40 to, I'm sorry, Matthew 5, rather, Matthew 5, from verse 40 to 45. And, of course, we've explained that in previous lectures, why he said so. So, and it is, as they wish you, so will it be for them. As you wish them, so will it be. So if we, Pray against them. You are praying against yourself. So take note of that so that your life will have good success. Amen. Then always, if you have requests, of course, nobody does not have. Table your plans before God. Tell Him what you desire. Tell Him where you want to get to in life. Tell Him whatever you want Him to do for you. And then do not stop there. Then be working towards realizing them. Many of us pray. We don't get results because we didn't work towards to actualizing them. Many of us also pray amiss because we are asking for things that God does not have a plan for us. So if you pray and you are not seeing your result, it's either you have prayed amiss or that the timing for God to do it for you has not come. You remember Genesis 18 from 1 to 14. Abraham waited for 70-something years for Isaac, but the time at the appointed time of God, Genesis 18, Isaac came. I pray, whatever blessings that still tarry in your life, as the Lord God Almighty lives, what you will do to provoke it. Do you know that what Abraham and Sarah did was to uh, do hospitality, welcoming visitors, three of them, and that day they got their blessing. What you will do to provoke your blessing? You will not miss the opportunity to do so in Yahushua's name. Now, more points. Everything on earth always praised the Lord. Uh -huh. He reigns from generation to generation. Exactly. He has always done it. Uh -huh. He will do it again. Now, God bless you. You see, anytime I reflect upon my life and uh, I'm facing challenges, I always remember the past. 
There are so many testimonies I could give, but because of your time. You see, there is never a time in the past that I called upon God that never answered me. No, He answers me speedily and even more than my expectation. There is no time. I'll share one. I told you there was one time that I was so much in financial indebtedness that, look, I, I didn't know what to do. In fact, whatever I was earning was not enough to do anything about that indebtedness. But, glow and behold, I pray to God, my wife and I, we pray to God that, Lord, please change this situation. And not long after, miracle happened. In fact, the miracle that happened was that I was owing, the money was 3500 I was owing. And I prayed to God. And he did what God did about, I mean, I prayed that prayer in April. By August that year, miracle happened that gave me uh, 8,840 uh, or something. Over 8,000 naira. I was looking for 3,500 naira. And I got 8,840. And from that money, I was able to settle that um, indebtedness. And at the same time, from that money, I was able to purchase a land that the place I first built my house on planet Earth. The, I was able to buy a land, that land for 3,000 naira. So you can see what God can do. When you have an uphill task, leave it unto God. He will do it. That's why I say, you see, he has done it before. And many times he has been doing it. And so anytime I'm facing challenge today, challenges today, I know that he will do it again. That's my where I anchor my faith. And it has never failed me. Trust in the Lord. And there will be solution to your problems. Yes. Mark 3 and 4. Now we're going to Mark 3 and 4. Yes. Christ's mother are looking for him. Uh -huh. Next. Our private family. Uh -huh. The story of Sower. Okay. Let's, let's take that first. You know, Christ was about his ministry, going about his work in the ministry, and his, fam his family, they were looking for him. And that day, Christ taught us one lesson. We have many families. Many, many families. Now, we Christians all over the world, we are one family in Christ. That's one thing that people don't realize. We are one family in Christ. And then we have our biological families, brothers, sisters, siblings, and so on and so forth. Our larger families. We have them. Uh, blood families. We have them. Then, of course, uh, even in your various, um, you, you, you are hearing of Rotary Club family, Lions Club family, you know, it depends, professional families like accountants, they are ICANN people, Anand people, and NBA, that is Nigerian Bar Association members, um, everybody has professional families, everybody has families. But Christ made one thing clear here. When they came, they say, your families are looking for you. Say, ah, Abba. Yes, that one is settled. But the people I'm staying with here, they are my families. Anywhere you find yourself, you have a family there. You have a family. I am from Iyekiti. In fact, when you mention Iyekiti, of course, you have mentioned a family. I belong to Iyekiti family. You understand? So every one of us from their various places, we are families. Christ made that clear. But in Christ, we have larger families. It is Christ's family that comes across ethnic barriers, religious barriers. I say religious barriers, so, but we say Christ's family, yes. Do you know that Muslim brothers and sisters, they are your family. <laughs> they are serving God the way they understand Him. Yes, but we know that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. But they are your family in the Lord, still. Amen. Though anyone who is serving God is your family. Yes. Christ mothers are looking for me. Uh -huh. A family for the story of the soil. The seed fall of good soil uh -huh. is the one that succeeded. Uh -huh. Those who ask questions, okay. God does now, not understand. Before, before we go to the story of the soil, uh, according to the title of this one, I say prepare your heart. 
ready for the understanding of the word of God. Yes. If you want to ever succeed in life, please endeavor to read the book of Joshua 1, verse 8 to 10. He says, if you want to succeed in life, you want to record good success, good success. So, he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall study it day and night, and you shall meditate upon it, and endeavor to do according to what is inside of it. And then, may your ways prosper, and you record good success. I pray for you and I today. As you now, if you have not before, as you now get yourself ready to prepare your heart to take in the word of God, I pray that you shall record good success. There is no success anywhere without God. No good success anywhere without God inside of it. Now, like I said, to God be the glory. He gave us the manual of life, which is the Bible. The word of God is here and amen. In fact, it is inside the word of God you have solution to your um, let's, let's start stages of life you are giving birth to when you are introduced to god it is from god that will nurture you in the way you will go it is you will see to your growth everything then when you go to school to study it's god almighty that will be with you there when you are looking for the job to do is the one that can give you the right job to do when you want to marry I tell you, there are many women, there are many men in the world, but not all of them are fit for you. He is the one that will help you to choose the right uh, partner. Then he is the one that will give you the right children, because they are right and they are troubled children. The one, if you call upon God, it is God that will give you the right children. And training them is God that will train them for you. You can't train any child. In Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train your child the way he should go. So that when it grows up, you will not depart from it. It's only God that can possess the heart of your children. And then they become children that could be easily reared according to the will of God that will give you peace at the end of the day. Then, if you are now, you, are, you have been working, you know, savings, savings is very difficult. And to be able to plan your life so you retire happy with all the various things happening in the world, Changes upon changes, government policies that bring about the downfall of businesses or even the organization you depend upon will just collapse overnight. Eh? You know how many banks have gone under? Where is Nigeria Airways? Where is um, um, Pan American Airways of those days in Nigeria? Where are the King's Ways? The Leventies, they are history to this. You see, people worked in those places and hoping to retire in them. Even the ministry in Equity State, there was a period in the life of Equity workers, Equity State government workers, that they were not paid for upwards of eight months, ten months, one year. You know, and many many other states were paying half salary. Many are still on salary. You see, when you are doing all those things, you see that unless God helps you, it's God who can order your step, make you to go and work in the right place where you will retire happy. And even your pension. Many people are waiting for their pension. They don't get it until they die. Even gratuity that they should have taken away when they are good. They don't get it. But when God is on your side, He knows how to order your footsteps. And if you want to invest, it's God that can help you not to invest in bad. I want to tell you there is no one answer to the world. Look, a wise and good and uh, wise investment. People went to MMM, they failed. People went to shares, they failed. People went into running production. They failed. Now, the latest trending things, farmers in particular, especially animal husbandry, those who are rearing fish, maybe you heard them over the radio recently or over the net, that they are closing down their businesses now. The feasibility studies are beautiful, but in practice, there are so many forces that if God does not order you, you will fail. I went into farming for good. 10 years consistently. What did I come back with? If not for God. In fact, I came back paying debts. You see, unless God helps you, you will not get anywhere. So, the manner of life is the word of God. And what keeps us, keeps sustaining me is the word of God. I have faith in God. 
And I thank God that my faith is working for me. So trust in God. Whether your business is going down, whether your school, you, are, you, are, you have no means of going to your school, whether there is um, there are so many economic downturns, you see, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in a way we cannot see. He will make a way for you. He will be our God. So take note that God will always make a way for you. He will order your foot steps. So there is no right or wrong decision that human beings can take. It's only God that can say yes and turn your disappointments to blessings. So shall it be in Yahushua's name. Also, that reminds me. Anytime I read back my autobiography, I wrote my autobiography because one, I am giving account of my life. One, to my children because they have to know their beginnings. And then to, um, to my larger family is part of the family history. Then to the community, that is to the nation or to the entire world so that people can see what God can make out of somebody who is nothing. God can make him somebody. Amen. From uh, grass, can raise somebody from grass to grace. And an epitome of God's mercy, like I said. I wrote those things so that, you know, nothing will be... And, and then one of the mistakes we make is that I know that book has blessed somebody. Somebody wanted to commit suicide. I was, the testimony was that that person changed his mind. And today, by the special grace of God, he's alive and he has done so much for himself after reading my book. So when you think that your, your life is so is blocked and there are all roads blocked, there is even a chapter like that that says all roads blocked in my in my autobiography. And then, and then the next chapter was all roads open. There will always be roadblocks. Then the roads will always open when God is on your side. So prepare your heart. And the bottom line of all these things that is happening to me is because I hearkened to the word of God. I, I love the word of God. It gives me hope, gives me strength, gives me inspiration, gives me, gives me direction, gives me, gives me assurance, gives me everything. There is nothing you are looking for. The greatest mistake a person can make in life is to jettison the Bible. And, you know, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I love God and God loves me. I can tell you for real that for free that God loves me and he loves you if only you come unto him. Amen. So, now let's go to the story of the sower. The sower went ahead and started sowing. Some fell on the roadside, people marched on them, they wasted their way. Some fell on the rocky soil, they, they, they germinated, they grew a bit, they, because the root touched the rock, they could not tap food, they died. And some fell on the uh, inside the thorn, and those ones grew, and the worries of this world and so on, so on they fell, and they, they died. We I mean, choked them. Then, the few that fell on the good ground, that's why I say, let your heart be the good ground. Let the word of God fall into that heart. Let that your heart be the fertile ground where the word of God will, excuse me, will stay, germinate, and produce marvelously in multiple fold. Amen. Those other three, they didn't survive it. But the one that fell on the good soil, many of us will hear the word of God. We just think it is entertainment. Many of us go to church as if it's a social gathering. No, it is your personal relationship. With you. you have to communicate with your father. Your father communicates with you. He holds you by the hands and you walk before him. That is the way. He will now begin to guide you. And God works, take note, God does not work magic. He works little by little, one thing at a time. It will show you. Amen. When I my education, for instance, let me just my education, I wanted to go to school, no money, nothing. But at a point, God helped me, reminded me with my hands I could labor. I labored and I invested that money. It's not God that gave me that wisdom. Many of my friends invested on 
alcohol, they were invested on women, cigarettes and all these things. But God gave me that wisdom to invest on. And then he gave me the perseverance to be able to study day and night, just as he asked us to study the Bible. So I was I studying also my secular books. And today I am the better. It's just God. Anytime I, I, it seems that the road is blocked, I call upon my God, he answers me in any situation, whether it's financial situation, whether it is health situation, whether it is marital situation, whether it is children's situation. I have so many testimonies. There is no aspect of life that I cannot share testimony. So, let this so let your heart, your heart, you see, the word is the seed. Let it penetrate into your heart. The Bible says there is no point spending money on a child. That has no heart for learning. Don't be a child that has no heart for learning. There is nothing you know. Let God teach you Himself. Let your heart be with God, and you can never miss it. That I didn't miss it, you can never miss it because God is always on our side. Yes, go ahead. Who asked question God did one? Uh-huh. You see, after God, uh, the Christ has told the story of the sower, then the, the disciples asked him questions again. That's it. Prepare your heart for understanding. They asked him questions and he said, Tell me, Master, who, I mean, tell us the meaning of this. He said, Didn't you understand? It means their heart was not yet prepared. Prepare your own. When now Christ was now explaining, you see, there are some things you do when you are learning. When you are being taught, you see, your teacher will, either, will tell you the opening will be like the introduction of the subject. Then, second thing will be illustrations. All right? And then, finally, you will be able to get the gist of what he's telling you. Illustrations. Illustrations. Christ now told the disciples, let me illustrate it for you. Your heart is the soul. The word of God is what is sown in your heart. And when the word of God enters into your heart, then the spirit of the Lord comes into your heart and begins to direct the affairs of your life. The affairs of your life. What to do, what not to do, and so on and so forth. And you can never miss it. So, prepare your heart for understanding. Yes. Don't be too far, mommy. The word uh, of God is the seed. Uh-huh. Our heart is the soil. Uh-huh. Those who are the word and does it, uh-huh. they succeed. Uh-huh. The kingdom of God. Uh-huh. Study the word of God. Amen. Be you patient see? for good results. God bless you. Speak the word to others. God bless you, man. So you can see, the word of God is the seed. Your heart is the soil. Once the word enters and you are ruminating upon it, according to Joshua 1 8, and then you now put God first. Uh, Matthew 6 33. Seek you first. The kingdom of God. God is first in your heart. And then the fear of God will come to you. That anything you want to do, you check it against the word of God. That is, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 1 7. You see, once those tools are working in your life, you are developing closer relationships. God will now be relating with you one on one. May God relate with you one on one in Yahushua's name. Just because of our time, there's so much to say, but let me shorten it there. Yeah, go ahead. Exodus 22. Exodus now, yes. More love, justice, uh, hey. support, malicious. God bless you. It's love okay. It's okay, okay but you are going to read that to us. Amen. Now, brethren, I told you. We are coming through the Bible. We are not going to skip any chapter. God helping us. Amen. Now, we are in the period of the law. I told you the law does not bring you uh, excitement. Amen. We started with Exodus 20 yesterday, the, the last the previous lesson. Exodus 20, where you had the Ten Commandments. In fact, that's the basic law. I want to tell you, all the laws, 613 of them in the Bible, they are a distillation, they are explanation, they are illustrated, they are expansion of the Ten Commandments. They are, just, okay, we are going to take some few things now. Mommy, please go ahead and read those things to us. 
Malicious witness. Malicious witness. Do not witness do not falsely. Witness. Uh, do not witness falsely against another person. Do not follow the crowd. If you love somebody, will you do it? No. Do not follow the crowd. Even if the crowd, the majority is saying uh, yes. So to something that is not right. And you know that the word of God says no. Must you follow them? No. Yes. Take care of the people. Do not take care person. of the people. Take care of the poor in particular. The poor, the needy, the orphans, the widow. Take care of your parents. Take care of your children. Take care of your larger family. Take care of your community. Even take care of Nigeria. Don't be, don't do antisocial thing that will make Nigeria's name to go on the record of terrorists or bad things. Yes. Take care of the people. Do not accuse falsely. Do not accuse people falsely, yes. Do not oppress foreigners. Do not oppress foreigners. Take Steal good your care land of them. For six years. Steal your land. You have to labor with your hand. Those of you who are looking for miracles, you go to Mount, Mount okay, okay, Rio, okay, Apata, okay, everything. All the mountains. Thank God that full and these are driving you away from there now. So make sure that you till the until you till the land. Prayer is verbal. Practicalizing it is tilling the ground. Whether you're a carpenter, you're a bricklayer, go and work. Don't overcharge people. So don't overprice yourself. Don't have you price yourself out of market. Don't cheat. Don't all this corner side thing that you are doing. Something is one hundred, say it's one fifty naira, and at the end of the day, you don't get the job. And the person who wants to do it, you weaken his ability or her ability to do it, and then you set the person back, you set yourself back, and you are hungry. At the end of the day, you say there is no job there. Is no... If you are doing little today and little profit that is consistent, you will feed fat and you will take good care of yourself. You see, all these things. Okay, please go ahead. There are still more. I want to summarize it with something. Yes. Yeah, now for six, six Even the land six should rest after six years. You see, do you see that God says on that seventh year, let the land rest. The poor, the birds of the air. You see, you are hearing the song of the bird now. You hear. That, those birds, they will eat. Uh, you see, the birds of the air, they don't sow, they don't, uh, they, they don't have it. Yet, they are father in heaven. It is for what you did. The remnants. Yeah, you cannot harvest, no matter how good you are as a farm, you cannot harvest everything in your farm. There will still be room for animals. To eat, that we eat everything. God is feeding them. So, please, brethren, take a rest. Walk for six days and rest. On the seventh day, rest, rest. Give yourself a rest. Work life balance, so that you don't die laboring. Amen. And feed yourself well. Observe what you eat and make sure you are eating health food. Not and health food is not expensive. In fact, if you if you eat so much of vegetable, honestly speaking, you some eat some fruit, you don't need so much of a barbala, especially when you are over 40. Alright? I want to tell you one of the experiences I had. Let me relate this. When I retired, after at, at about the age of uh, 51, I went for early retirement. And by the time I was around 60, I said, Yes, I'm, I have now retired. I want to be eating. The food I have not ate, I had the opportunity of eating, pounded yam, you know, all those things as a kitty man. I said I wanted to be eating, then I want to be drinking, taking a lot of fruits. You know what I did? I was eating pounded yam regularly, regularly, all those starchy foods. And then I was eating, uh, uh, I was taking what you call the, what do you call this mixture of, mixture of fruits? Uh, the mixture of fruits that you mix together. Smooth. Uh, say it now. Smoothie. Smoothie. Uh -huh, smoothie. Brethren, beware of smoothie. Be careful. Most of these fruits, you cannot combine them together. Watermelon, cucumber, banana. I buy, you know, all sorts of. I planted and I, I was eating them. I was doing everything. And I drank a lot of tea. Man, sugar, sugar, sugar. The fruits contain a lot of sugar. A mixture of it, some of them are not compatible at the end of the day. What did I get a result? I just started, I just discovered that my eyes started getting blood. You know, to, to know the root of what is worrying you. You pounded yam, sugar. All the fruits combined. Compatible, not compatible. Sugar. Uh, what other things? And so many things. And equity. Ah, sugar. And so my eyes started getting 
blood. Got to a point that I was almost practically almost blind. I never until I started checking and then started for my blood sugar. I started saying I saw it was very high. And then checking a BP, BP, even though I was on anti malaria, it was, it was just struggling. So many a thing that we think we are enjoying, we are killing ourselves. Beware. A little bit of fruit, not so much. In fact, just one type of fruit every day is okay for you. Not that you mix everything as I did. I must share this as practical experience with you so that you don't fall, especially your body may tolerate it when you are younger. But when you are from 40 upwards, watch what you eat and take proper supplements. Supplements that will help to balance, especially something that will detoxify your body. You see, I have learned my lesson. You see, if it were previously that I would think I the witches and wizards, especially that I've gone back to my community, I would say, ah, they have, they have been waiting for me, not knowing that I was undoing myself out of ignorance. ignorance. My people perish from lack of knowledge. Knowledge of God and then knowledge of what you are eating, knowledge of your lifestyle. If you have bad lifestyle, you think you are enjoying those who are into alcoholic, oh my God, your heart, your liver, everything, uh, they are all being damaged by the, those who are on the cigarettes. And then those of you can jump from one woman to another, you know, thinking that you are enjoying, ah, oh my shame. Before you realized it, you are dead. That will not be your portion. All these things you think, moderation in everything. Bible has taught us moderation in everything. Those of you who marry several wives, good luck to you. Surely, your body, your BP will respond to the number of wives and children you have. Even those of you who have one wife and you have too many children, the responsibilities of this world will make the word of God look like the one that fell onto the tongue and the tongue came around and choked them. You will be choked you just have the number of children you can take good care of so that you will enjoy your life and your children will. There is no point bringing 10 children. And out of the 10, they, when you are dead, they cannot even buy a power, bossy uh, coffee. They cannot buy the wood with which to put together your body and bury it. It's, it's foolishness. My people perish from lack of knowledge. Be careful. Yes, please go ahead. More laws, justice. Malicious with uh -huh. no favoritism. Uh -huh. Do not be malicious. Do not be malicious. Uh -huh. Do Go not on. follow the crowd. Do Take not follow the crowd. All these Do laws. Not abuse forces. Uh -huh. Do not suppress forests. Uh -huh. See your land for six uh -huh. years. Uh -huh. Work only on six in uh -huh. on six days. Uh -huh. Your workers must. Uh -huh. Do okay, not serve another god. Do Seven not serve days. another god. Those of you will go from Yemoja to church, from church to mosque, from mosque to. Uh, Osho, from Osho, ah, I pity you. I pity you. you. are wasting the precious time that the Lord has given to you. And unfortunately, you can't recover it. The precious time you are wasting. Spend that time doing what will elevate your life. Doing your work well and investing well. And pray to God to show you the right place where you can invest so that you retire happy. Do not fall. Then, like I always said, it is very important that you know without God, you cannot be anything. You can't be anything. It's God that is helping you to see. It's God that will give you the discipline to run away from loose women. It is God that will give you the discipline to be able to know where to invest your money, not to go and use it for jai jai. Bible says, he who tends to luxury tends to poverty. It is God that will tell you not to be lazy. Bible, God hates lazy people to the core. God says, call them slugger, the slothful, the lazy and so on and so forth. He gave them all such things. He said they will be rolling on their bed. Well, look, the beds are crying now. They are singing praises to the Lord. They are doing their work. But lazy man will wake up and say, Oh God, you this bed, you have come again. Ah, and what is even the time? It's already 10 o'clock. He's still sleeping. Ah, and then, brethren, God Almighty will guide your footsteps. I think the word of God has spoken. The difference between the Old Testament and the you see all those do not, do not, do not, do not. Are they not summarized in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39? Love your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. You love God. 
you are worshipping him, you are not worshipping any other God, you love your neighbor. No evil. You don't wish them evil. You do good to them. You the, the poor, the rich, everybody. You make sure the church of God everywhere. You make sure you are doing what you could do. And then you love yourself. Don't be somebody who walk, 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 and you eat like an ant. That's not good. What you eat is your gain. Eat good food. I told you the kind of food you eat. Do not eat in a gluttony manner. Glut, don't be a gluttony. Eat something that will profit your health. God bless you. I hope you have been blessed. Father, we just want to thank you once again for this great opportunity this morning to enlighten us on so many things. Accept our thanksgiving in Yehoshua's name. I commit your children into your evil hands. Just as you've taught me good lessons, even from my previous mistakes. Heavenly Father, I pray, as many as are making their mistakes now, Father, show them the way to reverse her. Reverse the irreversible in their life. Those who are drunkards, let them become somebody who will hate drunkenness. Those who are glutens, Father, help them to be able to monitor their eating and their lifestyle. Please let this begin to change for the better. In Yehoshua's mighty name we pray. And I pray also, at the end of the journey in this world, let us reign with you in your heavenly places. Thank you, Father. Blessed be to your name. In Yehoshua's mighty name we have prayed. Amen.